If you can travel and you can show people that you're traveling the way they're living in their country, the respect that you'll get from them is something that you would never, never get otherwise. According to John Hawkins, in just one night, his travel video got 10,000 likes and over 400,000 views on Facebook. Today, about a month later, his video has generated about 300,000 likes on Facebook and over 4 million views on YouTube. But who is this avid traveler nicknamed Jayhawk? And what is it about his personality and travel adventures that has made him so popular? In this first part of this two-part interview, Jayhawk reveals his secrets. Also, find out what is the one event in his life that made him realize his passion for traveling. His story is next on Human Stories Unveiled. Tell us a little bit about your traveling experiences. Okay, so I guess I started traveling uh, in about 2008 and basically I took a year off school and I went to Europe for about four or five months and literally had the time of my life. So that kind of fueled all the future traveling. And from there, I mean, I moved to Korea and basically when I first got here, every opportunity I got, like I was gone, China, I was going to Japan, I was trying to do something cool and like see just something in the world, right? So then from there, I just kept doing bigger trips. So I started getting to South America, started traveling Asia, started traveling where else did I go? I went to back to Europe and then I guess Australia. Wow. And then I went to Africa, which was the longest one for about a year. And that was the last big trip that I did, which a lot of the videos have been played from Africa. So that was like a real eye opener and an amazing trip. So why did you initially start traveling? Like, was there something that just, you know, one day you're sitting and you're just like, you know what, I want to travel. Like, what was it for you that Sure, yeah. I mean, you know what it was? It was, okay, so I took a year off of university and I was working in a factory. Okay. And so my goal at that point was that I wasn't going to go back to school and I was working in a factory, working like midnight hours. And it was, I mean, it was crazy. Right. My whole life was just the job. Right. And that's all it was. And I think I realized over that year that, you know, life is short and I mean, education is important and I mean, you got to get out there and see stuff and you just I didn't want to be that guy just working for a company and having no time to do the things I wanted like I always had a passion for travel when right. I was a kid I always wanted to you know go places see things so once I worked there really made me realize like I just got to get out of here and you know do what I want to do and how do you cover your expenses as you're traveling okay well I mean as a teacher here uh, life is not that expensive if you want it to be so I mean I saved a lot of money before I started traveling with like jobs to university and stuff. But I mean, now I just, you know, I do a good job of making sure that I put my money into the right things, which in my view is traveling. So I just, you know, work as a teacher and make it happen. Okay, so you've been saving your money all by yourself and you know, you've been dedicating it to traveling, working really, really hard as a t while living as a teacher in South Korea. Yes, definitely. All of like, honestly, all the money that I make here pretty much goes into traveling because you know, sometimes I'll try and be like, you know, not spend too much money when I'm here, but right. I'll easily put all that money to traveling in, right. you know, you know, come maybe I'll come out with like nothing, but the experience of traveling and like seeing the new things is to me, it's always worth it. Yeah, I was going to ask you, so what exactly does traveling mean to you? Um, I mean, to me, traveling is life. I mean, I literally like whenever I have the opportunity to have time off or to, you know, not be working. The only thing I think of is like, where am I going to go new? What new people am I going to meet? What new experience am I going to do? So, I mean, to me, yeah, traveling is just like, it is life to me. Like it's all really that I think about whenever I'm not working, my goal is to come up with another new trip that, you know, something amazing that I can do, show people just, yeah, yeah try and do something real fun and, and unique. Sounds exciting. Once you do the first big trip and you get out there on your own, you realize very quickly if traveling is for you or if it's not. Exactly. And like there's just some people where like with me, it literally just clicked. Right. And I knew that like working in an office and being that typical nine to five guy, right. it wasn't going to be me, right? right? And like I wanted to get out there and do those things and everything I saw on TV and. Right, would you say that like once you started traveling, like you just saw this different world 
and you compared it to what you were doing back home and you just couldn't go back to it like that yeah. might have been another factor like it was just so difficult to go back to like the nine to five job knowing that there is so much out there to do and see and Oh, for sure. I, yeah, I mean, definitely. One of the biggest things was, yeah, coming back and then realizing that, you know, like all young people, I mean, you're working a nine to five day, maybe you get two weeks vacation in a right. year. And I mean, I just finished traveling for, you know, months on end and I, I come back and then, you know, I'm sitting in like an office and I'm just thinking like, I don't want to do this, right? Like this is, this isn't the way it has to be. Right. I know a lot of people perceive it to be that way. And you think that, you know, everyone thinks you got to do it by the book and right. you know, you need to work, you need to get married, you need to have kids. Right. That's the way it is. But I mean, you know, we have so many opportunities in our life that, hey, if you want to do it another way, Why you know, not? get out there and do it, right? Right. So before you were mentioning how you were working at a factory and then it clicked for you that you wanted to travel, can you just explain to me what exactly happened while you were working at that factory? Sure. Well, I mean, yeah, I, basically I was working 7 p.m. until 7 a.m in a factory. So, you know, you got a lot of time to think. And like, I was just sitting there and like, I didn't, you know, I was working, I could have my iPhone or my iPod in. I didn't have enough like songs to go through the whole night. Like right. I'm just thinking there and I don't even have enough thoughts in my mind. So like just all the stuff is running through your mind. And right. like, I'd already traveled a little bit in my life, of course. And I was just every, every day, all that was running through my mind was like, why am I doing this? So at that point when you were working at the factory, you had already traveled a bit. So you had a little taste of traveling. Sure, sure. Whenever I got a chance, even when I was younger, I mean, me and my parents always went on, you know, a month drive down to Florida. We went to the East Coast of Canada. We went to, you know, all the all through New York, all through like different parts of America right. or the Caribbean right. or different places. Right. So, of right. course, I got a little bit of a taste for traveling, but I think it wasn't until of course, it wasn't until I took a, a, a long trip, a long backpacking trip when I think that's when my eyes opened up to, to me what traveling is. To me, traveling isn't going to a resort, right. sitting there on, on the beach, you know, eating fancy food. Mm -hmm. To me, it's being with local people, you know, going and, and roughing it, right. living the way that they do. If you, can, if you can travel and you can show people that you're traveling the way they're living in their country, the respect that you'll get for th from them is something that you would never, never get otherwise. And right. I think that there's a there's a very strong line between people who, who realize that because so many people are so scared of traveling that way, right? Like it, it, there's not many people I meet who are willing to do that. My trip was, was hitchhiking, it was camping, it was eating locally. I try, if I wasn't doing something that was like had to be done through like a group, it was doing it on my own, giving money to local people. And when I would meet these local people, we would watch a tour bus go by right. and these people would be they would like be looking at Africa like a zoo. Like they wouldn't even want to get out and acknowledge these people. They'd be taking pictures from a closed window. And it's like, right. I'm sitting with these people like, these are the friendliest, warmest people I've ever met. Why aren't you here? Exactly. Why aren't you taking the opportunity to come and say hello? And you know, if, I think the thing too is when you're traveling, if you just tell someone your story, right. they're so just wowed by what you're doing. Even mm -hmm. if you think your life is so normal and you're not doing anything yeah. to them, and maybe if, if it's a poor country or a country that's had a lot of problems with war, right. your normal life isn't so normal to them. So right. you can just really wow those people by just the simple of like things, talking to them, right? And it's really, it's a really cool feeling to be able to just have them like, wow, like, and you, you know, you're, you're not even, they'll tell you, oh, thank you so much. And you didn't even do anything, right? You just did. Yeah. So when you're traveling, do you spend most of your time hanging out with locals or do you also like hang out with other backpackers? Yeah, sure. I mean, there's a good mix, right? Like, of course, I mean, I usually travel alone. So of course, I'll, if there's like people traveling, I'm going to try and, you know, like hitchhike together. Or right. if, I meet a lot of people who, who don't have camping equipment and then I'll be like, you know what? Like I'm going to camp. Like you got to come try this. This is going to change your trip kind of thing. So I'll always bring them along with me. Or, and of course, yeah, I'll stay at hostels and do the whole backpacker thing, of course. And many things you have to do in that setting, mm -hmm. not everything. And especially if you're going to like Europe or Australia, right. it's not like you can really just go and do something so much on your own. Everything's just in the in the backpacker realm of things, right? Yeah. So I get a good mix of, of both. Thank you for watching the first part of Jayhawk's interview. Please follow me on Facebook or subscribe to my YouTube channel to catch the second half. In the second segment, Jayhawk not only shares some travel advice, but has a very special message for his fans. Also, find out what his most memorable travel experience has been. I'm Rajni Sharma, and I will see you next time 
on the Human Stories Unveiled.